So in rescuing history from the nation, you know, I did identify the relationship, the close relationship between historical narratives and the creation of modern nations, as I mentioned, uh, from the 1880s, 1890s, first in Europe, and then by the first half of the 20th century, or within 20 years, circulation moves fast in the, the, the rest of the world, especially in Asia. And uh, so, you know, I was, from the start, I was very uh, uh, interested in what is the alternative to, to national histories. And I developed a concept that was adequate for my needs, but it wasn't a very uh, powerful concept that I call bifurcated histories in that book itself. Because I would f see that there was one group that was taking his these historical currents and narrativizing them in one way, but there were other historical actors who were doing it in a different way, right? So, and bifurcated. I mean, you could have 10 different kinds, but basically there was more than one understanding of history, uh, both in the creation of historical process, but also in the understanding of it and ultimately feeding into two different uh, historiographical possible accounts. Well, I think in this more recent book that I've written called The Crisis of Global Modernity, I have developed that much more into circulatory histories, right? Uh, which builds on the idea of merging and emerging and diverging and converging uh, of currents uh, through the world uh, and with different temporalities and different types of interactions that I talked about in my lecture today. So, uh, so I'm still working on that more. As you heard today, I'm trying to work on the ocean and ocean currents as a metaphor to understand. And the goal, of course, uh, is that how can we understand... So the importance of the oceanic metaphor for me, or the model, is that on the one hand, it does sort of make it much more interactive and circulatory than tunneled national histories. Uh, but on the other hand, it also has a more natural basis. And we've tended to think of historical processes as something created by humans. That is the idea of history, you know, when you have records, and not just humans, human culture, because you had to have records to be, otherwise you're prehistorical, right? So I think we need to sort of break away from that, see ourselves much more in nature and see ourselves much more as part of the planetary heritage.